Hi there, and welcome to my channel, Lifestyle of a DIYer. In today's video, we're gonna take some trash and we're gonna turn it into some cute home decor. I actually have a very diverse background. I've been a CFO and a CCO, can cutter opener, and I have the pull tabs to prove it. You'll find out what that's all about in the video. So let's get started. Here is the inspiration for my first project today. I saw this on a YouTube video where someone was shopping in Paris at a flea market and I thought I could make that, but I have no idea what video I was watching. So to make this, we need to cut up some soda cans. I have always used tin snips and scissors. Some people use a serrated knife, but that's never worked for me. You can see how easy the soda cans cut with scissors. So you could cut out the puddles. But I used to do craft shows and farmer's markets and I needed to make a ton of flowers. So I used my Big Shot. And one of the dies I used was this one, flower layer number five. Here's a picture of one of the flowers I used to make. It was one of my best sellers, Coca-Cola. Then we're gonna take our flowers and we're gonna separate the petals because we're gonna need about 24 petals for this first project. Then we're gonna take the petals and hot glue them to PVC pipe. I think this is half inch. It was just big enough so that a taper candle could go through it. Once the glue dries, you can adjust the petals to make the flower look nice. And here I'm just snipping off the bottom of the petal. I'm taking off the point so it's flat. I thought it looked nicer glued to the PVC. And then I took it outside and it got probably four or five coats of spray paint. Here are a couple of pictures of the hats and flowers that I used to make. The flowers were interchangeable, so they just snapped off and on. The next project that I'm doing with the soda cans, I am gluing them to a tuna can. And I did the same, well, I actually goofed. I did the first row was the small petals and the second row was the larger petals. I just goofed. But it all turned out at the end. And when you're using a project like this, when you're doing a project like this, you really have to use spray paint. You, you can paint it by hand, but it's gonna take you way longer. You really need to use spray paint. My favorite spray paint is the Rust-Oleum 2X Ultra Cover. But when I went to Home Depot, they only had good spring colors in the Krylon. Krylon is not my favorite spray paint. Hopefully you can find them uh, in Rust-Oleum. And now on to DIY number two. You've probably seen other YouTubers do this project. It's really popular right now and I wanted to try it, but I could not get the bottom of the can flat. I used a rubber mallet. I tried it on the garage floor where I could really pound on it and I could not get it to work, but I just went with it. I'm using fusion paint in the color eucalyptus and I've mixed it with some salt wash for some texture. And if you don't have salt wash, you can just use some baking soda. Just add as much baking soda as you want to have texture. And we couldn't stop at just hats. We had to do interchangeable flowers on flip-flops. Now I'm using the IOD mold, Fleur de, that's why I put it on the screen, with the IOD air dry clay. If you watch my thrift flip video, I don't have that many videos right now, so it's not that hard to find, but I will put a link in the description below. I do a better job of explaining how to use the air dry clay. You just wanna to remember to always use cornstarch first and that will help release the clay from the mold. Are you visual like me? I need to see it before I can commit to it. So here I am trying to figure out the best way. Now I'm going over everything in the fusion color champness, but I still wanted to make sure that the eucalyptus showed through. So I'm using a wet rag to lightly distress.
And finally, I went over everything in DIY white wax, and then I used dark and decrepit dust to add age to the project. I forgot to turn my camera on when I was punching a hole in the can, so I just wanted to show you how easy it is to punch a hole in a tin can when you have the correct punch. This is called a crop a dial punch and it's really easy to use. I had some help and someone made these hair clips for me. I just crunched up to some paper to fill that space in the bottom of my basket and then I took wired twine to make a hanger for my tin basket. I just used flowers from my stash, which most of the flowers came from either Dollar Tree or Walmart, so they weren't very expensive, and I just kept filling my basket till I liked the way it looked. And on to DIY number three. The napkins that I'm using for this project I ordered off of Amazon and it was the first time I had ordered decoupage napkins and I thought I was going to get a whole pack, but I got two. And when you, de when you decoupage with a napkin, you want to make sure you get to one ply. So these happen to be three ply napkins, so I had to remove the two extra layers to get to that main layer. And I'm usually not the neatest crafter, but these napkins were not cheap, so I'm getting this one put away and out of the way so I don't ruin it. There's a term that they use for this process where you tear away on the napkin you don't cut but I cannot remember that word if you can if you know what that word is would you put a comment below I tried to google it but I could not find it but anyway so I applied the napkin to the container using liquid patina and I put it on the container while it without painting it because the napkin will show through better when it has a white background. So then I painted it after I decoupaged both pieces on. And I used Fusion Champness for this project too. Then I used the IOD Rose Toile Stamp and the IOD Ink in Black. At first I thought I was going to use the lid to go with this container, but then I decided to make it look more like a crock, so I used the IOD Trimmings 2 mold. You know, part of the fun of crafting is figure out how it, you're actually going to do it, and so here I'm still working through that process. And I finally decided to put it around the top of the container to make it look like a crock. I needed just a little bit more to make it go all the way around the top of the container. I used painter's tape to hold it on and I let it dry overnight and then in the morning I covered everything in white wax. These skulls were made with the inside of the can and an embossing folder. And here's the final reveal. I don't think you could tell that these items started out as trash. On the first pink candle on the left, the base of that candle is a Starbucks bottle. On the second candle, that is a bulb cover for a light fixture. And on the purple project, the base of that was bought from Dollar Tree. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoy this kind of content. 
In my next video, it's going to be all about budget-friendly Easter decor using thrifted items and some scrap wood. So I'll see you next time. Bye.